hear, oh, we're Palyanya and you call a place Palu, that's very interesting, and ah, here's a Kvar Mechtes and Chor. Um, uh, Dmitry Sergeyevich Likhachov thought that the Armenian was a derivative of the Slavonic legend. There are many good reasons this cannot possibly be the case. In Likhachov and Adrian Vaperet's edition of the Povis Fremen Likhliet, he simply states boldly that uh, the Armenian legend must derive from the Slavic. However, we should point out that Armenian script had already existed for a good 500 years, yes? Uh, that these traditions come from the pre-Christian stratum of Armenian culture, yeah? because they have to do with the temple of Gisane and of Vishabha uh, yeah? so that so, so, so that these would definitely predate any Slavonic legend. Yeah? That, that could be compared to it. Now, what nobody seems to have, suggest, have, have wondered is why these, these two particular uh, people, Ki and Chori, are so important. Why would anyone pay attention to this legend in the first place? There are a lot of legends about three brothers. Brothers always come in threes. And in Slavonic folklore, even more so. And usually the third is the Ivan Durak, the Ivan the Fool, and so on. So yeah, why these three? What was the particular charisma of the story? Well, if we remember that the, all of these legends are surround the temple of Vahagan in the Mush region that became the shrine of, of St. John the Forerunner, uh, Surp Garabit. So again, there is a Zoroastrian substratum to which one has to refer at some point. And the, notice the first and the third brothers are the important ones, Ki Choriv. For the Zoroastrians, the sign of divine favor is something called kian khwar, meaning the radiance belonging to the Kavi dynasty, the Kayanian dynasty. Holiness is described as a kind of a luminosity coming from heaven which bears this name in Middle Persian. Now, if one is looking for a legend that would describe the founding of a particularly important place, a place of particular sanctity. Yes? Whether it's the Temple of Gisane and subsequently Surpgarabet, the most important place of pilgrimage in Armenia, probably predating Etchmiadzin, or Kiev, Kiev, yes? Before any other Russian city existed, there was Kiev, yes? Here we have a great legend with a nice correspondence of names. You see? So this is at least a suggestion that some kind of Armenian lore, folk, heretical, of ancient Iranian religious content and thus of undeniable antiquity, makes its way thanks to Armenian settlers in the Balkans, who are adherents of these heresies, who have these oral memories, northwards to Russia. Some material undergoes transformation into a mildly Christian form. Other, other material remains more or less unchanged. And we then can ask, is there anything more in the Book of the Dove itself that might point to some kind of Armenian source? Maybe there is. Ocean. Remember, ocean is the biggest of all seas. Yes? Ocean is said to have a cathedral in it. The cathedral contains the relics of the martyr Clement. Now, there is a hagiography of the martyr Clement. He was mistreated in the Crimea, and then his ashes were cast into the Black Sea, and there they are. Yeah? Uh, but in the poem, this, there is a cathedral in which the ashes 
have found their home at the bottom of the sea, and every so often it comes to the surface, light shines from it, and guess who shows up there? Not Clement. The Virgin Mary does. Yeah, that's very interesting. Now, Mush, 50 miles across a plain from the western shore of Lake Vaughan, directly at the base of the mountain massif of Sassoon. The epic of Sassoon takes shape in the region thus. The mountains of Mush and of the Vaughan Basin. Most of the critical material, in fact, of the Sassoon epic, an epic from Armenia which I can confidently date in its basic sources at least to the second century BC, probably much earlier, yeah, the, the, take place around Vaughan. Vaughan Fortress and the sea. Now, the epic begins with the story of two brothers, Sanasar and Bakhtasar. Bakhtasar is the younger, he's a bit of a coward, he's not all that interested in being a hero, and when he finds out that the only way to, to get the weapons, the talking horse, and the other stuff that heroes need is to dive into Lake Vaughan, he says, well, you do it. So his, his brother, Sanasar, the elder, dives in to this very deep lake. It's actually quite a scary lake. It's cold and um, it has strong currents. You remember from the poem, Ach Tamar, that people can drown in it. You know, he dives in all the way to the bottom, and then suddenly the bottom lights up because there's a chapel there. A chapel of whom? Maruta Surbas Vazazin, the holy uh, mother of God of Maruta. Yeah, it's her shrine. Yes? She appears in a kind of a, a reprise of the whole scene, the 10th century um, mystic, Krikor Narikatsi, meditating one day, looking out at the lake, which was just north of, of his habitation, suddenly sees uh, the Holy Mother of God floating in the air. And she, uh, so he says, I, oh, she's holding the baby Jesus. So he says, take my soul. Yeah? Arter is answering. Take, O oh Lord, my soul. She says, no, no, you, you come to my son instead. So he flies across the lake, oh, in the air, yeah, to a tiny island, which gets the name Arter as a result. Take, O oh Lord. This is a folk etymology. And he founds a little chapel there. Fine. But there's another version, too. There's an Armenian manuscript from Astrakhan, South Russia, which describes how once upon a time there were some pilgrims on their way from uh, Van City to Nar Narakavan, to Narak Monastery, in a boat, a ship. There were a lot of these that plied Lake Van. And uh, it was blown, of course, to Arjesh. Arjesh is on the northern shore of the lake. Well, it isn't on the northern shore, actually. It's under the water. It sank in the Middle Ages. Uh, it got, but there's another one there now. It goes to Arjesh and sinks, and he disappears. His parents are all upset about this, and they, they go to Narakatsi's shrine. And, but no worries, because the kid sinks to the bottom of the lake where there's what? A shining chapel, you see. And who's in it? Surkrikor Narakatsi, yes, who shelters him for a year. He gives him nishkar every week. He eats on that. He goes on that for a whole year. Nishkar is like communion bread. You really can't live on it. It's like it's like this big piece of lava. And uh, but he's a saint. And um, a year later, the kids found dripping wet sitting on Narakatsi's tomb, and his parents, who've been somewhat worried, are very happy.